Hey guys, this is Gagarchary, welcome to Japan Treaty Guide episode. So there were tons of requests on Japan's uh, Treaty Guide, so it's finally here. And with the usual flow of the video, we start from the deck selection. As you can see, Japan have tons of uh, decks, I would say, because they have so many cards that are useful for their treaty game and then uh, on some of the decks uh, you cannot use all of them so you have to neglect some and put some others depending on what you want to do with uh, on that game with japan so i start from this deck so for this deck from age one we have this card which is for your shrine as you can see the wood cost of uh, your shrine will be reduced by 25 percent and then uh, also it will increase the gather the auto gather rate for the different resources by 50 percent so this card is a must because with japan you always have to build your shrines uh, in case if you don't know the shrines are the house of japan's so you have to build them uh, in case uh, if you want to have extra population and also in addition the shrines will give you a small uh, uh, resource trinkles which is really useful during the game and then we have this card uh, which is for the consulate so this card uh, you will need it because with japan you have to take uh, so many uh, upgrades from the consulate and also uh later in during the game if you want to if you plan to use the horomotos you can use this uh, consulate to train them faster so in case uh, if you're missing this card your horomotos will train so much slower but then uh for this deck since we are not using the export card you can just uh neglect this card i would say and then put your one card so your monk will have extra 50% HP and 50% attack damage but then uh, based on my experience I prefer to have the consulate card for this deck and then uh, there is this card which is insane I would say the best age one team card uh, that is available right now as you can see when you send this card your whole team gather rate will be increased either from fish either from whale from meals estate and the even the normal resources everything will be increased as you can see uh, except for the hunts where japanese do not use the hunts so except for that everything else the gather rate will be increased by eight percent which is massive and then we have this card uh, which is for your meals and then this card for your uh, plantation uh, where uh, for japan you just have rice paddies and then you can uh, either select to gather coin or food from them so these boats are for the rice paddies so this one is a 50 percent increase for food if you are gathering food from rice paddies and this one is 20 percent coin if you are gathering coin from rice paddies and then for h2 we have this card uh, i really like this card uh, especially if you plan to use uh, japan for a norish 40 or 40 uh, minutes treaty game which is the usual uh, rank games for treaties the reason for that is uh, when you take this card your shrines will be able to generate uh, X xp where uh, you can just get the xp much faster at higher rate and then i've I can say that if you do it correctly you can just get all of your cards everything by uh, 
36 or 35 minutes of the game i would say so you can get all of these cards before the treaty game ends why is it important the reason for that is each each of these cards will give your military or economy a boost so if you are having all these cards sent that means that your economy will be to the roof and your uh, military will be at their highest potential i mean based on what decks you are taking so uh, i it's really important to have more cards before the treaty game ends and then with this card you can just have all of your cards before the treaty ends so uh let me like say it like side by side like for example germany if you play they have lots of cards they have for their uh, military but then the problem is that they cannot get all of their cards uh before the treaty ends even with trade post you cannot get all of your cards so but then let's say if you have this card with japan you can send all of this so let's say for the 40 minute mark your armies will be at higher potential compared to germany because they are lacking some card but then you have sent all of your cards that is why i like this card so that is why i have it in all of my decks uh, unless you're playing uh, in no rush 60 or no rush 55 then you can just neglect this card for that case and then put like i don't know yumi uh, attack damage or yumi hp depending on what whatever you plan to do on the game but then uh, i would say for no rush 40 I highly suggest you guys to take this card. So here we have the... Oh wait, I didn't finish this deck. Okay, so here uh, next card is the Ashi's uh, HP card. Uh, sorry, attack damage card. Uh, in case if you don't know, the Japanese mu Musketeers are one of the best Musketeers inside the game. Because of their insane stat so this one is 50 percent attack damage for them which is really massive i would say and then uh you might say well you don't put the yumi archers uh, attack damage card uh, it's just my play style i uh, i prefer to more play with the ashes and then also use mortars and then uh the normal ashes i mean without the boost cards they're fine they will do just fine and then also you can just train the ninjas uh, from your shogunate so uh, sorry from your shogun which are uh, really good i would say i really find them useful the ninjas they're almost like the uh, ashes but then uh they're like mercenary type uh so yeah i don't find it necessary to put the yumi's uh attack damage boost card or yumi's hp card for the range for this deck uh so you can just use them normally without their upgrade card so you can just use the uh imperial or the honored uh yumi archer and uh as uh, aside from that you can just use the the ninjas that you can train from your shogun as well to counter infantry and then uh, next card we have the samurai attack card i really like the samurais no matter what i always use them because of how effective they are they cost two pop but then they do area damage they can they have high siege damage they are insane i would say so that is why i really like to have this card and then uh, the daimyo card uh, you will need both of this card and also your shogun card because uh in case if you don't know that you can train uh militaries 
from your daimyos and also your shogun and also in addition your daimyos will boost your uh, military's attack damage and then your shogun will boost your uh, military's uh, hp so but then uh, you have to keep in mind if you want the additional boost for their attack or their hp for in case of the shogun you have to have your units near them so uh, i think uh, you can uh, during the game there there will be a like a cloudy thing under your uh, militaries so that means that your units are boosted by the shogun or the daimyo so that is the range and that is how you can identify if your units are boosted on their attack or hp by your shogun or daimyo during the game and later i can i will show you uh, how it looked like and then we have this card 50% uh, for meal of course you will need it and then uh, this card uh, I would say it's necessary uh, okay later I'm going to show you something else so this one uh, as you can see it will increase your gather rate for meal uh, which in case of the Japanese it's rice paddy so for your food and coin gather rate from the rice paddy you will get 8% gather boost for both of them uh, and then if you are thinking this card uh, this boost for one card is good but then uh, and also in addition this card when you send it it will give you a rice paddy which costs 400 it's not much but it's fine but then the main point is the gather rate and then uh, we have this card 20% uh, for gather rate of the coin from rice paddies and then uh, since we are here at this point I just want to uh, tell you guys something else uh, so there is this card also same function as this this one will give you a rice paddy and then also it will increase your uh, gather rate for food and coin by 10 percent uh, there is another card also here as you can see and uh, this card is for age one but then uh, it will only increase the gather rate for five percent uh, in my opinion since the Japanese have lots of cards lots of military upgrades and then uh, usually with this deck I, I never had any problem with my economy unless my uh, my wonders are down so usually with these cards you will do just fine in terms of the economy so you won't have any problem with your economy so that is why I don't find it necessary to have this card in my deck because it's just like something extra so instead of wasting a card uh, a card space for this I can just use something for my military so that is uh, something that I wanted to highlight for you guys to just keep that in mind okay so uh, for age 3 we have this card uh, so this card it will as you can see when you send this card the nearby enemies uh, the enemies near your monk will have lesser attack so uh, this card will stack with both of your monks so let's say for example uh, i just give example let's say the enemy's uh, musketeer unit have like uh, 58 damage but then uh, for example just this is just example so then if you send if you have one monk near them the attack damage of the enemy's musketeer will be reduced by uh, reduced to i would say 54 and then if you have both of your monks near them it will be around 50 okay this is just example not the exact unit and i don't i'm not really sure about uh, how many percent they will reduce the attack damage and it's not stated here but then for sure you will find and you will feel the effect of this card during the battle so that is why i really like this card 
and then the other thing you have to keep in mind in case if you don't know you can uh, after you upgrade your monks uh, through the monastery which is the church of the uh, not church I would say it's just the church building of Japan so after you upgrade your monks you can uh, put your monks in stealth mode and I have tried that if you put your monk in stealth mode during the battle your monk won't reduce the nearby uh, enemies attack damage so make sure to just have them in normal mode so they can give your uh, give you a good boost for the battle and then we have this card 25% for your nagis uh, so this card is, I would say it's really important to have if you plan to use your <clears throat> Nagis, which is the only melee cav unit of Japan. So in case if you want to, and if you plan to use them, you must have this card. And then uh, the other thing, I mean the least that your Nagis can do is just to be as a mid shield. Uh, in front of your army to just block the enemy's uh, incoming damage but then they are really effective against uh, archers and artillery as you can see it's stated here so just yeah, you can use them against a uh, skirmisher type archers and artillery and then uh, there is this card as you can see uh, add one hand attack to uh, against uh, skirmisher and archer but then it will reduce this bonus against uh, other uh, heavy infantry so just uh, have that in mind if you're playing against a sieve that gonna use uh, lots of uh, skirmisher type like for example <clears throat> uh, i would say dutch because they will usually use uh, skirmishers and their uh, Reuters with their artillery so you can have this deck to have the bonus against the skirmishers <clears throat> sorry and then this card I've already explained is the daimyo you, you must have it and then there is this card uh, as you can see uh, the <clears throat> the bonus that this card give you is you, you can train uh, your militaries faster from your daimyos and your shogun so and also it will give them 10% speed which is useful because uh, you usually don't want to have a fight with your daimyos or shogun so what you want to do is just hold them at back keep them safe and then just train unit with them while they are boosting your units <clears throat> and also in addition it will give them 20 percent uh, sorry 20 line of sight which is good to have and then uh, this card as usual 25 percent gather uh, get rate from mines and uh, states and then and this card is for food 20 percent for each and then this card i've already explained and this card is 25% for the gather rate from the uh, rice paddies for the coin. And then for H4, we have this card. Uh, I would say it's really uh, useful to have infinite uh, unit card with Japan because uh, later uh, when you upgrade uh, one of the uh, Spanish consulate your shipments will receive uh, very fast <clears throat> sorry again so when you have this card your uh, when you have uh, that upgrade completed you can just uh, send this card and uh, you will notice that they will receive you will receive them very fast and then in addition if in case if you don't know you can set the shipment point from the daimyos and the shoguns which is really massive so you can just uh, set the shipment point for example from for this daimyo and then 
your Nagi's uh, shipment will just receive through. Uh, I mean, when you receive this card, they will just spawn uh, near your daimyo. And then this card uh, is a must card for any deck because you will get your mortars uh, range uh, and line of sight uh, increased by four and also in addition it will give 10% 10 uh, 10 all damage action which is massive so I would say you have to it is necessary to have this card because you will find it very useful during the battle and then we have this card so this card as you can see whole team uh, upgrades a unit upgrade will be reduced by 20 percent at any cost and this card is really really useful if you're playing in a team game but then uh in some other decks i will show you you will see that i'm missing this card because i'm using some other cards that i think it's more important than this card and then this card is the shogun so in case if you don't know you can train uh you can train ninjas and uh one melee unit uh, that i forgot the name so <coughs> both <coughs> sorry again so both of your ninja and the melee unit count as a mercenary unit so you can just train them <coughs> and also you can train the flaming arrows and then the uh what was it called the moritaros which are the mortars of japan through your shogun and then with your daimyos you can only train your cavalry and also your uh, infantry units so just make sure to keep that in mind hmm. <laughs> and then we move to next deck this deck is for water so if you plan to use the water for your economy you can just use this deck in case if you don't know the Japanese have really insane uh, echo with water because of these two cards these three cards I would say so usually with Japan it's I mean if you have water control you can use the Horomotos because you can just gather so much coins from the water. And then you can just send this card uh, later during the game to just uh, exchange all of your coin for uh, export. So you can train Horomotos from them. <clears throat> so this deck compared to this, as you can see, I've just... <clears throat> sorry uh, i've just added this uh monk card to have it uh, during the battle and then uh this card uh, you can send it twice so overall this card will give you i mean at the second time when you send this card will give you like maximum is 25 plus 25 is 50 percent and then this card is 35 percent it is 85 uh, percent and then with this card is 115 percent for fish and whale gather rate <laughs> so with this card sends your gather rate from the water will be uh, insane so that is why Japanese have insane water booming as well. <clears throat> so in addition uh, to the deck, we have this card, which is 33% uh, infantry siege damage. The reason for uh, that you want to take this is because of this card, where is for your Horomotos. <clears throat> So when you have this uh, this card, your Hotomotos will destroy the enemy's wall very fast. So it's really useful to have it. So make sure to have it in mind as well. And then other than that, uh, as you can see, I've reduced, I've removed some of the military boost cards to have these. 
uh, water economic boost cards and also uh, in addition I have added the this card for the export and then to train the Haramotos and also this card for increased siege damage <coughs> the Japanese have decent I mean their units uh, without their upgrades is decent but then if you have the upgrades of course it's much better so in case um, if you don't plan to use the Horomotos you can just remove these two cars and then add like uh, whatever you plan to use for example if you plan to use Aishis you can just use these two cars if you plan to use Yumi's these two cars uh, depending on your playstyle what you want to do with your uh, what you want to do during the game <clears throat> but for me I find this uh, more useful if I have water control because I will have so much coin so I can just use the coin for Haramotos <clears throat> and then we have this card as you can see compared to this I don't have the XP thing anymore because uh, if you set the XP thing uh, you cannot the, the thing with Haramoto's rush is to gather as much coin as possible before 40 minutes so what you want to do is just set your shrines on coin so that is why uh, if you have this card and then uh, then you won't be able to set your shrines on coin because it's on XP so on this deck you won't uh, you won't be able to get all these cards uh, before uh, 40 minutes but then uh, it doesn't matter because you're planning to use the Haramotos so you will get so much XP during the battle. I mean, by destroying buildings and killing enemies, so you will get the XP pretty fast. And then aside from that, everything else is uh, is the same as you can see. It's just that the other thing I've removed is this card and this card because I'm planning to use Horomoto, so there is no use for my... Uh, cavalry to have extra damage against uh, a skirmisher type and then uh, this card is another deck as you can see uh, the only difference with this uh, deck is that I've removed these two cards and then added the Aishi's uh, multiplier against cavalry and also this monk card other than that is the same card uh, as you notice all of these are almost the same card it's just that uh, I'm removing some to add some others uh, depending on what I am facing uh, so let's say for this deck I would say it's good against some uh, sieve that they use uh, lots of cavalry let's say for example Spain France so with this deck you can have both your samurai and your uh, Aishis to just destroy the enemy's cavalry. And just uh, have that in mind. This one is just hand attack. It's not range attack. But then in addition it will give 50% HP as well. So just keep these in mind. And then uh, uh, this card again is for Hotomotos but then uh, compared to this as you can see it's just that I have removed the Aishi card so I can have this card so uh, this this deck uh, I would say it's useful against uh, some um, specific matchups so let's say for example if you're playing a match against uh, either China or Russia or Lakota which they have uh, sorry sorry uh, Japan uh, I mean if you have a Japan in your opponent 
or if you have Russia in your opponent or uh, Lakota in your opponent. So these uh, sieves, they have a high potential of raiding either for Japan, they can just raid you with Hatomotos or with uh, Russia, they can just raid with Opris or uh, for Lakota, they can just raid you with Tok Tokalas or uh, any other first rate cavalry like axe rider and tashonke combo so these uh, saves they have their first first rate so it's better to have this deck the reason uh, for that is uh, so what with this deck uh, you are not gonna send this export card uh, before the uh, i mean when the battle is starting so what you want to do is hold this card until uh, you feel that you need it. So let's say, for example, the enemy is destroyed your shogun, uh, your shogunate, so you are not able to train these units, uh, these daimyos anymore. So you're as long as 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 soon as your shogunate is dead, your military train time and also your uh, sorry, your military train time will be reduced and also you cannot uh, train these units anymore if they are dead. So if that's the case and your shogunate is destroyed, you can just gather as much coin as possible and then uh, send this export card and then just uh, use the Horomotos to rush your enemy base to uh, do some decent damage to them but then make sure to have at least i would say 20 uh, 30k to 40k coin and then send this card uh, even 20 i think uh, 25k above coin is enough for this card so you can do some serious damage to the enemy so uh, I think I can show you a gameplay with this deck later uh, about what I'm talking about so I'll show you later and then this deck if you are playing on water and I mean like full water map like for example Caribbean or like Amazonia so you will need the warship uh, boost and also in addition I've added this card so when you uh, send this card you will get uh, this one of these warship and inside these you will have four horomotos which is really useful and then uh, I've used this deck uh, this card because uh, in case if you don't know this card uh, stack for your warship and also your ally warship as well so when you send this card I mean your ally, I mean your team will have a huge boost in their economy because they need to spend lesser amount of resources for their upgrades, especially for ships. Because there are like two ships as well, it's like uh, 3000 resources, but then when you send this card, it will be, uh, let me see, it's like 600 lesser for the imperial upgrade of the ships which is really massive <clears throat> okay this one is okay so this deck is in case if you are using the water and you don't plan to use the horomotos just like this so in case if you don't plan to do that you can just use this deck and then uh, in case if you feel that you won't need this uh, card you can just remove it and add the six infinite nuggies to just send it mm. through the battle but then i prefer to have the chip upgrade because uh, usually on water maps i mean on the map that have water i usually upgrade my ships to just have them in case in case that the enemy is attacking me through the water wait where is the card okay i'm missing the card okay never mind oh here okay and then this deck 
which is uh, if you use this deck properly you can uh, I would uh, not against actually uh, high elo players but then uh, let's say medium to low players you can just use this deck or the Hatamoto deck to just destroy them so this deck is just for uh, Samurais so the plan is just to use Samurai and Artillery and then push your enemy so with this deck as you can see I'm just using Samurai upgrade card and then Siege damage card because again you're using Samurai so you you want to have them at higher siege damage and then the fast XP card to get all of these cards before the treaty end and then your monk cards and then this card uh, even though it will increase the cost of them by 10% but then uh, since you're using the summarize it's good to have the 10% speed so your samurai will move much faster but then if you think uh, it's not necessary for you to have this card you can just remove it and add the uh, you can either add the Hotomoto card for I mean for later stage of the game I mean for uh, the same thing that I explained here to have it as a backup plan or you can just use I would say your uh, your Nagi's upgrade so you can just have a counter unit for the skirmisher type and then we have this card so with this deck and this strategy what you want to do is just have a max uh, samurai and this one I forgot to show you so this card will even though it's a unit card but then it will boost your samurai's HP and attack damage by 5% and then you can send it two times so it's uh, overall 10% at 10% uh, attack and 10% hp and then uh, oh wait i forgot one card uh where is it okay and then uh, i think this one um i'm not sure where to put it i can just put it for the monk so you can have this card as well uh, this card is as you can see daimyo samurai attack damage and hp will be increased by 15 percent so since you are using samurai it's necessary to have it i think uh, i've removed it accidentally with the bug so in case if you don't know there is a bug at the moment like for example if you want to remove this card it will remove a card next or after to that card and then sometimes you won't notice that that card is missing okay so so yeah you can just use this card and then again if you don't plan to use this card you can just remove it and put the the monk card and then this card is for the native if you plan to use the native you can just use this deck uh, I would say with Japan the natives will be really useful because they get a boost from your daimyo and your shogun and then also you have this card which increase uh, their train time sorry they reduce the train time uh, sorry it's this card yeah reduce the train time of your natives by 25% and also it will boost their attack damage by 30% and this card is uh just the cost reduction by 10 percent and also it will increase their bill limit by 20 percent so make sure to have all these if you plan to use the native and again if you don't think this card is necessary for your native deck you can just remove it and put like uh, your ashi's uh, hp card or yumi uh, attack damage or HP card whatever you think that is necessary for you but for me I suggest you guys to take this okay and then uh, this is the final deck and then uh, here if you're playing again in a small 
gap maps, uh, sorry, small maps with tight gap. Uh, for example, Orinoco or uh, so I can mention Andes or uh, there is nothing else that can I can reach at this moment. But then again, uh, if you are fighting in a small map that you are like super close to your enemy, it's better to have this deck. Oh, Yukon, for sure. You will need this deck for Yukon. So with this deck, as you can see, I'm having my Yumi boost, my Ashi boost. Again, Yumi boost, Ashi boost, cavalry HP card. So I'm not using Samurais at all because usually in small uh, gaps, the enemy will have the artillery behind their wall, so you are not, you won't even uh, be able to use the summarize that often. So, and then this XP card uh, is a must. But then, if you are playing a uh, Norash 60 or Norash 55 on Orinoco, you can just remove this card and then use like. Uh, let me see what we have here. Yeah, you can just use the cavalry HP card for your nuggies. So, yeah. Uh, other than this, I mean, uh, usually these uh, Yubisame archers I'm not using. These are the cav archer of Japan. Even though they have two cards, this one is 20% attack damage and this one is... Uh, 20% another 20% attack damage for them but then personally I don't find them useful because I have uh, Aishis as counter cavalry and I have uh, Samurais as counter cavalry so I don't find it uh, useful and then uh, even for this all them uh, you will get a bonus damage against artillery I can just use the flaming arrows to do that so personally I don't find the Cav Archer of uh, Japan useful, so I just that is why I don't use them very often. So this is all about their deck. It was a long deck explanation. They, as you can see, they had tons of decks. I mean, even they have a lot more decks that they can use, but then. These are the ones that I use uh, often. So now I'm going to show you two different gameplay with two different uh, strategy. Okay, so, okay, let me just mute this. So for age one, what you want to do is uh, uh, some player, they do a shrine. Uh, sorry, they build consulate at age one, but then... Uh, I find this strategy more useful. So at age one, I just build one shrine with my monk. And then, oh, this one I forgot. This uh, really important thing. Uh, with Japan, what you want to do is just build your shrines near the, uh, sorry, near the hunts, near the hunting animals. So what they do is just, they will pull the animals to them and then they will have a higher uh, gather rate for the resources or even the experience. Uh, I mean, the XP is just for the, uh, I mean, you will only be able to gather free uh, XP trinkle after you get the XP card. So yeah, you, you, you just want to build your shrines near the haunts. So the haunts will gather the uh they will just go to your shrine and then your shrine will have a higher gather rate so each shrine will have uh can have four animals around it so just uh, make sure to have that in mind later i'll uh, show you how to set up your shrines before the battle start and how to build your shrines uh, later in the game so for age one, what I do is just uh, build one shrine and then uh, one market. 
so and then put uh, one villager on coin to gather the coin for my uh, market upgrade and then just use my explorers to just if i can find the market upgrade for the coin for sure uh, sorry if i can find the treasure with coin i will use it for my market upgrade so this is uh, it for the early stage of the game so what you want to do is just set all of your villagers to uh, food uh, usually 15 villager is uh, enough to have and then uh, don't forget about the one villager so for age one you want to gather uh, that one is 50 25 75 coin for age one and then uh, after you get 75 coin you just uh, do the upgrade which i'll show you later okay so for the market upgrade with 75 coin and 75 wood which you have always i mean in any game you will have this 75 coin if you do this build order so you do this upgrade and then this upgrade so this one is a gather rate boost for all of the resources and then this one is just a gather rate boost from the uh from the berries so just uh, make sure to do that and then after that as you can see I just move all of my villagers on food and then usually as I mentioned uh, having trained 15 villager and then that is enough for you to age up <coughs> okay uh so yeah and then you just want to gather until you age up i'm just gonna fast forward to the age up point okay so at this point uh when you have 800 foot you just uh maintain uh training villagers because you don't need your town center to age up you will have to build wonders with your villagers so you can just uh, keep train villages from your uh, town center and then build your uh, wonder which is your age up option with your villager usually i use two uh, two to three villagers for the age up so the more villager you have you will age up uh, at higher speed but uh, two villager i find it's useful for me so for a first age up you always want to go with this uh so make sure to have you all of your wonders in a safe place because if you lose your wonder you will have lesser power during the battle and then usually if you lose two wonders mostly you will lose the game unless uh you're in the enemy's base and then you're destroying them as well but usually it's better to have your wonders and this at the safe place and then protect them at any cost okay so for this shrine you want to what you want to do is just build them near your hunts so it, uh, this big shrine will get uh, eight hunts or eight uh, animals so make sure to place it in a word that have eight animals or uh, if for example if there is uh, not much animals it's okay just uh, put it in a safe place and then later you can ask your ally to send ships to you to just put it beside your shrine okay and then for the card order this deck is uh, was for my fast xp card fast xp deck uh, this one I was I wanted to try it but then uh, as you can see here I'm using the infantry siege card but then you can just uh, neglect this and then use like Yumi attack or or Aishi's HP card so for the build order with Japan is always send this card which boosts your economy 
and then this card which is for your shrine uh, and then after that uh, what I do is uh, take this card because the consulate card you can just hold it for later so I take this card and then gather the XP as much as I can and then after this you get this card and then uh, after that you get these two cards the coin boost and the food boost and then uh, after these two you will get these two cards which give you uh, rice paddies and also boost them and then after that uh, depending uh, what resources you need on the map I mean, for example let's say if there are not much gold mines or not much uh, uh, food together you can just uh, based on that you can just either to decide to max your coin first or max your food first and then uh, after you send all these cards what you want to do is just send your uh, shogun your daimyo and then your last I mean the other daimyo and then uh, after that uh, you want to send your mortar card and then your monk card and then your uh, samurai uh, attack boost and your ashi's attack boost and your cavalry hp boost and then for this infinite card you can just uh, send it during the battle when you're almost like max pop later i show you how it's gonna be so yeah after you age up uh, make sure to have five villagers on wood and then make sure to do your market upgrade i uh, did i hit it no okay so your market upgrade is here make sure to hit it and this one is for wood this one is for coin so make sure to have both of these upgrades for age one after you proceed with the age up and then uh, usually when you're uh, moving to age two uh, you want to have a 10 villager on food to have enough food for to train villagers and also to proceed with your third age uh, and also uh, for uh, wood you want to have five villagers now i uh, five to six villagers i would say but usually i send a uh, six villager so yeah now it's four because i'm building the wonder and then after i finish the wonder i just move the two villagers to food sorry to wood okay uh in case if you want to follow the build order like step by step you can just check the, this video it's inside my channel you can check it and then uh yeah after you have 10 villagers on foot as you can see uh, i send the rest of the villagers on coin and then keep train villagers on coin until i have uh, i think 12 uh, no, no 30 to 40 villagers until i can age up to h3 and then make sure to when you hit h2 make sure to uh, do this upgrade because it will do i, I mean it will boost uh, all of your uh, gather rates and also make sure to do this three as well okay so uh regarding the shrines so for h2 you will click on your shrine and then set it on wood so your shrines will uh, uh, produce wood by i mean per time and then what you want to do is just uh, look for the hunts inside the map if they are close just build your shrines near them otherwise just uh, build your shrines in this way okay oh wait i forgot to mention this so usually for when you hit h2 you just want to build uh, another shrine uh, so you will have two shrines and then after that you build your consulate and just wait so after you build your consulate uh, you just go with portuguese so your age up uh, food all of your food costs uh, sorry 
your age of food cost will be reduced and also your building wood cost will be reduced as well okay so yeah you just go with portuguese and then uh, you just wait until the portuguese uh, alliance is complete and then after that you will proceed with the shrine building uh, the reason for that is uh, after you get that your shrine wood cost will be i think 73 if i'm not mistaken yeah it will be around that much so that is why you want to have the portuguese ally to have a cheap shrine and then i'm just uh, as you can see what you want to do is just uh, build your shrines in this way in a square i mean four of these together and then just look for more hunts if there are just build one or two near them but then uh, what you want to do is just uh, have your shrines in a safe place as well because later when the, your allies send the ships you can just fill your shrines with it so there is no need for the hunts okay so as you can see i'm just okay i'm just gonna proceed uh, a bit further until a point where i'm maxed on shrines yeah so as you can see here oh wait i forgot to show you the age up option okay so you maintain the shrine okay you maintain the shrine for uh, during the age two until you maximize your shrine to 20 and then uh, after that you want to go for the third age up you go with this one if you are using the fast uh, xp card uh, the fax, fast xp method uh, you will go with this otherwise you have to go with this one because as you can see it will give you 1.6 times experience point earned which is uh, really useful i mean if you don't have the xp card in your deck but then if you have you can just go with this so when you get this card it will give you a a, a cherry a rickshaw and also uh, it, this one will have additional power so when you hit it you can see uh, everything inside the map it's like a it's like a i think 10 second spy okay so for your shrines what you want to build uh, do is just uh, have a two space between them as you can see one two so when you see your mouse is like moving like one two is enough space for your shrine because uh, the reason that you want to have two space is have enough space for the animals to settle between them if you have one space there won't be enough space to set uh, your animals around it so you just uh, build it like this uh, as close as possible with two space between them and then it's better to have them in a square mode uh, square mode i mean four of these together so when you build it like this you can just build I mean later you can ask your ally to send ships to you and then you can just set it around them okay and then uh, uh, did i proceed with the h4 no i did so usually as you can see even though i'm aging to h3 i have enough resources for h4 usually it will be like this or you will be like super close to aging up but then when you're proceeding with h3 and finish with your uh, shrines make sure to still have your villagers on wood and also your shrine uh, to just gather uh, i think it's uh, 850 wood so after you get 850 wood you will have enough wood to build two town center and then after that you just set your shrines to xp okay and then for the 
uh, third age up uh, you will go with this one the shogunate <clears throat> uh, this shogunate as you can see it will give you one daimyo it's additional daimyo aside from your uh, the one that you have in deck and also 600 xp which is uh, useful to get your cards and also in addition as you can see land military unit train faster and cost lesser so that is why if you lose your shogunate uh, your units will cost more so your economy will drain faster and also uh, you will have a hard time to uh, defend against your enemy because your uh, your military train much slower usually i build my shogunate near my town center my f initial town center depending on where is it placed uh, because usually your town center will be center of your base so what you want to do is just have it at, at center and then uh, you can just i mean later when even if the enemy dis kill your daimyo you can just train it from this point and then it will be more close to your fighting area but then uh if you think it's better for you to put it at the back or put it at a safer place just do it for me i prefer it to have it at center of my base but then if you think it's better for you to put it at back at a safer place just do it because you don't want to usually lose this building because it's really important okay and then we have these two uh, and then uh, I forgot to mention uh, with your uh, Buddha uh, age up you will get this uh, cherry uh, cherry rickshaw so make sure to build it uh, here so because this one will finish very fast I mean uh, sooner and then after you finish with after you're done with this one you just send your villagers on this for uh, food production okay the card build order i've already mentioned and then yeah uh, when you hit h3 don't forget to build your town centers uh usually one uh, closer to the fighting area and also uh, towards the center of the map and then the other one uh, back in your base as you can see okay and I'm just fast forwarding and then for your uh, rice paddies you can just build it uh, near your shrine or wherever that is a safe more safe for you to build just like how you build plantation and your uh, meals is the same method you just want to have your economy building at a safe place okay uh, now I'm just fast forwarding okay now uh, did I proceed yeah it's here so for the last uh, age up you just go with this one it will give you 16 yumis in addition uh, it will give you some uh, arsenal upgrades and also you will be able to set your units to have uh, more damage or more HP or more movement speed and also uh, I think there is another one that can give you more range if I'm not mistaken okay but usually uh, after you build this uh, last wonder you just set it on HP boost which I'll show you in a second so after you hit with the age up uh, where is the consulate part okay so after you hit the age up usually as soon as you start to build your wonder you can just hit this because <clears throat> uh, you won't need the Portuguese anymore so uh, what you want to do is just uh, end your contract and then after that you just go with 
Dutch contract to get the bank and then the church and the arsenal. Okay. And then after the resources are finished, you just uh, move your <coughs> sorry, you just move your villagers on uh, rice paddies to gather some food. I mean, uh, you can just uh, gather some food to give to your ally to give you ships or if they are fine and they can give you ships for free for sure why not you can just ask them for ships so after you get the ships as you can see each uh, four ship uh, will go to one shrine as you can see uh, the other thing you can do is just uh, select like 10 12 ship and then set, set them to go here and then they will uh, go to the shrines automatically by themselves or you can just uh, set set them out, uh, by yourself manually okay <clears throat> and then yeah the other thing i wanted to mention don't forget to upgrade your uh, upgrade your uh, rice paddies uh, for the coin and for the food i think for food is like five upgrade and for coin is like five upgrade as well i'm not sure but the last upgrade for the coin is 1000 food and 1000 uh, wood and then also for the coin is uh, 1000 sorry for the food is 1000 food and 1000 coin make sure to hit both of them so you will have the maximum efficiency you can just refer to my video later to just see what i mean and also uh, don't forget to do your last wood upgrade from your market when you hit the age up and uh yeah so you just uh, want to gather some food. I'm just gathering the food to do my uh, coin upgrade and also give some food to my ally to give me ship. But then if that's not the case, you can just set your rice paddies to coin. Uh, the reason for that is just uh, you want to have your uh, units upgrade uh, so for your units, you have three infantry, two cavalry, and two artillery. Your artillery, you can upgrade them through your castle, and then your infantry through barracks, and your cavalry through stable. <coughs> okay, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, <coughs> make sure to build this uh, monastery. So after you build the monastery, you can upgrade there is a five or four upgrade at the second row just make sure to hit all of those upgrade so after you go with the dutch contract <clears throat> make sure to hit these three and then after that end the contract with them so this one will give you one bank and one arsenal and one church the church you can use it uh, to do uh, the normal church upgrade which is the 1500 coin uh, for the experience and then uh, this one is just coin uh, so it's, it's just a bank for the coin trinkle and then this one is just the arsenal to do your arsenal upgrade and then after that uh, you just uh, end your contract and usually by uh, I would say 30 minutes you want to have 50 villagers on rice paddies because you want to gather as much coin as possible uh, and then after that you just shift your uh, villagers I mean change your rice paddies to food so you can gather the food okay and then uh, after your uh, contract with the Dutch is over you just move to Spain and then do these upgrades so this one will give you shipments 
and then this one will give you I think fast research if I'm not mistaken I, I forgot uh, what was it but then you will need all of them okay and then yeah and I forgot to mention this so I'm just waiting for the moment that I set all of them so I can show you so yeah now after that is just building your base put a wall here build your uh barracks uh castle and whatever you have just a normal base setup okay just fast forward so yeah now you want to do all of your upgrades for your infantry and your cavalry to the honored level <clears throat> and then uh, and then as you can see i have 60 villagers on a uh, coin and then 30 villagers on wood uh, usually that is enough for your wood to gather and also for your coin to have them for your uh, upgrades and then uh, where did i actually set my I just want to fast forward to the point okay yeah so it was here so usually when it's like uh, around six minute five uh, or six thirty minute you just uh, change 30 of your villager that are on rice paddy for coin you just uh, change those rice paddies to food so your food will increase uh, significantly as you can see <clears throat> so now the battle is about to start and then your daimyos uh, you just want to hit this thing on all of them so what does uh, what this one do is just uh, hold them at their own place it doesn't matter if the enemy comes near them or not you just they will just stand still and then for one of your daimyos you just want to hit this one so later when you sit, send the infinite uh, nagi card they will just spawn near them and then what i do uh, i think you should do as well uh, is just uh, i set my uh, daimyos as one two three four five uh, sorry one two three four since i have three daimyos and one shogun and then later during the battle I just uh, hit one, two, three, four and then just train the units uh, this one was a small tip I think you, you should have known and then the other thing that you can do is just uh, since this battle I, I was a bit late for the battle and then uh, also I, no no sorry this, this battle I wanted to use the Horomotos that's why I saved my export but then if you want to usually if you have the export card uh, before you end your contract with uh, with Spanish you want to get their big army which uh, they will give you uh, Lancers and Rodolos so you will have a mass army for the start of the battle but then if you don't want it's fine you can just save your export so after you when it's like uh, one and a half minute you end your contract with uh, Spanish and then get this uh, get the contract with uh, Japanese so the Japanese will give you uh, attack boost for your mil uh, land military units and also after you you take the contract make sure to hit this one this upgrade so this upgrade will enable your uh, barracks your daimyos and whatever uh, you need training uh, options to train units as 10 which uh, you will find it very useful during the battle uh, I'm not sure where I can see it, but then uh, you can just refer to my video and see what I'm meaning. Okay, so for your uh, first army, you always want to have at least five mortars with you. 
The reason for that is to just destroy your enemy's first base as early as possible and then uh, you set, I mean you want to have your uh, explorers or your monks near the battle and then uh, the same thing that you did with your daimyo put them on a stand mode so they ju you just put them on stand mode and then uh, they will help you by reducing the enemy's uh, attack damage and then for the fighting uh, what you want to do is just uh, uh, keep your daimyo and shogun as you can see in a safe place and then uh, have your units uh, at the forward place and then as usual control the map build some barracks and stables to have a have as backup and then use your mortars destroy the buildings and also and then use your units to just uh, press the enemy okay so yeah that is the game plan with this tactic of Japan, you just want to go slow, push with your mortars, defend your mortars, push slowly, set a base, I mean, uh, sorry, extend your base, keep wall and control the map. So this map, this game, you can just uh, check it later inside my channel. And then the other game and tactic I wanted to show you is this one. So this one is the... Uh, the hot motor rush oh, sorry the sound was on okay so wait come on okay so this one uh the build all order is almost the same uh I just fast forward a bit so i get to the shipment okay i just want to show you the shipment okay so for this deck uh, and this strategy uh, what you want to do is just uh, for a first age up you go uh, I mean for the first card you go with this and then this and then uh, hold your card until you hit age 3 and then get these two cards and then this one and then uh, you can use this card but then i i suggest you guys since you are using you're planning to use the horomotos you get this coin boost and then after that you get this card and then this one and this one the reason you want to max your coin at this point because you don't have the xp card in your deck anymore <clears throat> so it's better for you to just go with one resource upgrade and since you're <clears throat> and since you're using you're planning to use the horomotos you have to max your coin upgrade so yeah just make sure to have all of these send and then this one this one and this one and then uh, after that uh uh, this card is optional you can just neglect it uh, as you see inside my treaty decks that i showed you earlier you can just neglect this deck to have uh what i can suggest you just put the infinite uh, nagi card and then for this card uh, you can just remove and put the hp boost uh sorry cavalry hp boost just i uh, wanted to i just forgot and then this card I just put it for a boost for my samurai but then if you don't plan to use you can just use your ashi card or yumi boost card so yeah after these cards you can uh, you have to send your daimyo uh, sorry your shogun so and then since you don't have the fast xp card uh, you cannot send these cards on until the battle is starting so what you want to do is just save your uh, shipment. I mean, after this, after you send this card, you save your shipment to send this export card and also your uh, infantry siege damage card. 
okay so just keep that in mind and then uh, after you send this and then during the battle when you get enough xp and um, firstly make sure to take this card and then after that take your daimyo and then uh, after you take all the daimyos take the uh, upgrade cards but i suggest the other thing i suggest you can do is just take the mortar upgrade card but then that is optional depending on what you plan to do with your game okay so the game plan and the game strategy is the same but uh, the only difference is that since you don't have the fax xp card uh, fast xp card what you want to do is just uh, use uh, this one there for h2 uh, so for h1 as usual you go with this no matter what and for h2 you go with this one to get more xp okay and then uh, everything else is the same and then we move to this part okay yeah so now as you can see i have gathered uh, some wood and then uh after this as you can see i'm just moving my villagers to rice paddies and also make sure to set your shrines on coin as well to gather as much coin as possible and then yeah you just gather the coin and then i just fast forward and make sure yeah to do your upgrades uh, while you're gathering the coin it doesn't matter because you for sure you must have your units uh, upgraded before you send your export card so yeah at this point uh wait when did i send my export card i think i missed it okay i just have to go a bit back okay i think i send it here so usually when it's like uh <clears throat> six minutes you can send your export card as you can see i have uh where is it I have around 25 coin 25k coin even though i don't have my uh, much ships around my shrines because i didn't have any allies to give me but uh, usually i think you can get around 30k to 35k <clears throat> if you do it fast enough and then you can just use all of those uh, xp uh, exports for your Automotors. <coughs> Sorry again. Okay, so now as you can see, the enemy is pressing me from this side, and I'm using uh, some Yumis to defend, and then using my Haramotos to attack from this side as a distraction. <coughs> okay so at this point i'm as you can see i'm ignoring all of these units and then i'm just going from the for his factory and his economy as it's set on the back okay yeah so that is the plan with the horomotos you just want to use them to attack the enemy's uh, economy as fast as possible and then uh, after this point as you can see his base is open you can just uh, check this match later in inside my channel and then as you can see since I've cleared here already I'm using the mortars to press the enemy and then uh, have Yumi's plus uh, ninjas because he's using infantry units mostly so i'm ha using those to attack him and then since he used some cav i just used some horomotos to 
kill them instantly yeah you can just check this uh gameplay inside my channel i have another gameplay with horomotos as well inside my channel you can check that as well so the plan with horomoto rush is just go f straight for the enemy's base and then kill all of their economy and yeah that is all about the horomoto rush and then the other thing i wanted to show you was this if i can find the video mm, okay not this one i think it's this okay so let me show you this one as well because so this one is the the strategy that i told you to have it as a backup plan so okay now i have to let me change my obs screen okay so yeah Okay, so uh, on this game, I used the fast XP card, but then I had the export card on my deck because uh, we were playing against uh, Japanese and also against, I think it was Russia, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, it was French. French and uh, Japanese. So as you can see, the map layout is not the best. And here is water, and then my wonders are here, which is not safe. And I have my uh, shogun at here. I mean, at this point, at this map, it doesn't matter where I put my wonders. If the enemy controls the water by any chance, they can just kill my wonders very fast. So that is why I go on this game. I go with this deck, uh, which is... Uh, where can I show you the deck? Okay, here. Okay, so for uh, this game, I went with uh, this deck. So the reason for that is just to have this uh, export card to send to use my Haramotos as a backup strategy. So in case if the enemy destroy my Shogunate. I will have a hard time, but then I can use my Haramotos to destroy them as well. But then, the thing that you want to do is do not use the export card at the early stage of the game. I mean, at the 40 minute mark. So what you want to do is just keep them at standby. I mean, uh, at hold and then use it if you need it. Okay. So yeah, and then as you can see here at this point, the enemy used his uh, Shogun, uh, even though we put some ships here, but then I don't know how they managed to pass. So he used some ships and then get to this point and then destroyed uh, with his Daimyo and Shogun and then destroyed my Shogun. So at this point, as I just fast forward. As you can see, since my units are training slower, I cannot uh, hold the French player. So what I'm doing is just uh, gathering coin as much as possible to send my export card. As you can see, I set all of my uh, rice paddies to coin since I have enough food. And then uh, put all of the rice paddies on coin. And then uh, send the export card at this point, I guess. Yeah. So I send, since I see I have enough export, and then set my, uh, send my villagers to here to attack the Japanese because he has a shogunate as well and important wonders. So I'm just uh, using uh, my daimyos at this point where is it so at this point of the game as you can see i'm using a base trade because i don't have my shogunate and then my uh, buddha building is not that important anymore and my 
shrines. I can just use the rice paddies to gather the resources and I have a Dutch with water boom which is which has insane eco as you can see. So he can support me. So what I did was I just uh, base trade to attack the Japanese with my Horomotos. Uh, where did I attack actually? Yeah, at this point as you can see I send a mass army to destroy his uh, building as you can see they can shred the walls very fast with the siege uh, boost card and then I'm just uh, having those there to just delay the French player as much as possible and then as you see I'm, I don't care about these ships I don't care about these units what I want to do is just destroy these two wonders okay so now I'm in I just rush for the wonder no matter what okay so that is why uh, you need to have this backup strategy on such a maps and then eventually we won this game I, I think later I can upload this gameplay so you guys can check it through so don't worry later I'll upload this gameplay as well so make sure to check that later to have this strategy as well okay guys it was a long video because they had lots of different strategies uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys find some useful information and learn uh, how to play with japanese uh, they are fun safe to play and i would say against uh, average to low elo players you can use uh, japan to just destroy the enemy your opponent but then in in higher uh in higher elo and against uh top tier opponents it's harder to play with them because they will just rush your opponent uh, rush your daimyos with your with their range cav so uh, they just kill your daimyo and then you have to fall back again and again so yeah guys i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you find some useful content and learn something from this video and stay tuned for the next video which is going to be for ottoman and uh, until then uh, see you guys and have a good game and good luck